We have here the 2024 Specialized S-Works Epic 8 in a size large weighing 23 pounds, 10 ounces. And in kilos, 10.72 uh, kilos. That is with cage, with tool, with SWAT storage, with all the batteries on there. Stay tuned to after the video where your free up ice on test on those Revolve Control SL wheels right Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here back with another video. And today we have the launch of the brand new Specialized S-Rex Epic 8. This is the eighth generation of this flagship cross country bicycle right here. And there's a lot to unpack with this bicycle. So in today's video, we'll be going over everything that changed on the Epic. Talk about the brand new suspension system on here that you guys can guess it. It has the new SRAM Flight Deck Rock Shock on there with the batteries that control the front and rear suspension, which we'll talk about in just a second as well, and go over the price of this bicycle as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy. If you guys are enjoying the channel, go ahead and drop a like, and you guys can also subscribe if you want more content just like this. Let's get into this bicycle right here. This is the brand new revised Specialized s Epic. This bicycle retails for $14,500 but it has the reason for it because of the fact of the new electronic suspension, the all new RockShox flight deck on here. We'll talk about the electronic suspension in just a second, but what did they change to this Epic to make it more competitive against the cross country world? Well, they changed the suspension travel for the original Epic. This bike, as you see right here, sits in configuration as 120 front, 120 rear. They're able to shave off 76 grams from the previous Epic frame as well. So you knew the previous generation with the Specialized Epic Evo, that used to have a 120 front, 110 rear. Now their Epic is going to just be 120, 120 and make it the most capable cross country bike out there on the market because of that suspension setup on there. For the geometry specs on here, it has a 65.9 degree head tube angle on here. They have an eight millimeter lower bottom bracket on there as well. And I believe the top tube length is also a 15 millimeter longer reach. They also say it has a 0.5 uh, degree steeper seat tube angle and then paired with the suspension as well, it is 20% less uh, suspension bob while pedaling on a flat surface because of that new suspension on there, which is really, really cool. We can see the down tube on here looks like it's much more flare on here. We have the new SWAT storage, a 4.0 system that actually has a door that's capable of, of holding your uh, tubes, your, your spare parts, whatever you want, your tire levers. I'll show you guys how this opens up in just a second. And that weight that I showed you guys at the beginning is complete with a power meter, dropper post, water bottle cage, water bottle cage, tool, and then also the stuff included inside there. And we have four batteries on this bicycle as well, which is pretty crazy to think about, but the suspension is literally no joke on there. So before we go over the walkthrough of the bike as well, let's talk about the suspension on here. This is the Sid Lex compared with the uh, flight deck on there by RockShox on here. If you guys are wondering, only the complete s Epic bicycles will come with the flight deck suspension on there. If you guys buy the frame separately, the frame is $6,000. It does come with front and rear suspension, but it does not include the electronic flight deck. I repeat, it does not include the flight deck on there. Uh, they will come with a three position uh, suspension setup on there, but it does not have the electronic. So the only way to get the electronic system on here is to buy the bicycle complete, which is $14,500. And paired with the electronic suspension as well, these shocks are tuned by Specialized to work as efficiently as possible with the flight deck system on there as well. I mentioned before, they are a three position on here. You can see on the flight deck, you have an open, a pedal, and a lock. You can control right here with your suspension, uh, with your uh, dropper post lever. So we go right here. Sorry about that, I had to take the battery off there. So you can see that. As I'm pressing this button right here, it's cycling through the modes, open, pedal, and lock out. While doing that one, it's also simultaneously doing the rear as well. Now, you can keep that in manual mode and control however you want if you wanna have it open, mid, and lock, and that is a true open, mid, and lock. Uh, it feels completely different in each mode as well, but the cool thing about this is when I was speaking to the SRAM rep, he basically said that this is pretty much going to run, you can run it pretty much in like an AI mode or like an automatic mode. So you don't need to control your system setup. Basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna have an update to your firmware and this suspension is gonna basically do it all on the go while riding the bicycle, using the data through the power meter, using the data through your cadence, and it's gonna figure out, obviously you're gonna have your, your height and your weight in there for the suspension, but it's going to figure out what kind of trail you're riding at, what kind of cadence you're riding at, what kind of power you're riding at. And it's gonna to fine tune the suspension while you're riding. Typically while riding, you don't wanna have your shock completely open here and completely open here. You don't wanna have them both locked out, locked out as well. So basically the AI is gonna read it where maybe it puts this into a mid or a fully locked out. 
and this will be completely open. It's going to adjust the compression as needed while riding. And they said it's really gonna have like a kind of like an AI kind of auto reading to it, which is really, really cool. I haven't got really much to play around with that yet because I don't think they released the firmware. So as of right now, we just have the, the regular open mix and lockout. Yeah, but it sounds really badass. Here's the sound to it. I mean, how cool. Imagine riding on the trail, all you just hear is that just going It's, I mean, that's, we're in the future. We're in the future now, guys, all right? That's really badass. So really cool, really, really cool suspension here. Uh, upside is that you're gonna have a perfectly tuned suspension riding no matter what kind of terrain you're at for that setting for wherever you wanna be at. Downside is you do have to remember to charge your batteries and you do have four of them total, so. Keep that in mind. You have the dropper post, rear, rear shock, front on there. So that is kind of a downside there. Um, but just keep it in mind. Um, yeah, so let's go into the bicycle itself and talk about the differences on here as well. We can see right off the bat, it looks much more sloper on here. It does have a flip chip that's inside there as well that you can go ahead, just like the old Epic Evo. You can change the flip chip. I believe it's in low setting right now. You can change it to high to go ahead and make the... Uh, the fork rig a little bit more in, and then also I believe raise the bottom bracket. Um, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but like I said, you can change that out if you like. You do have the normal cable routing that we're always used to. Shove the rear brake into the back. You have this little kind of guided routing here. It's very easy to run this stuff, very, very nice. Um, we have the same stuff that looks like it's on the Epic World Cup. You kind of have the blocker now, so that way your handlebar won't hit your top tube, which is always nice. This needs to be adjusted by us, <laughs> like that. Uh, you have your internal cable right here, which I don't like for a mountain bike. I don't get, this doesn't look cleaner at all. I mean, the bike is really badass, but it doesn't look cleaner at all uh, to run it through here like this. And you have to change your headset bearing. You have to do your, your brake codes to change out your headset bearing. Like literally, it wouldn't hurt to go right there, but it is what it is. They're trying to do the most and also specialize. Please make a spacer that's a little bit wider to fit this freaking bar right there. Like that... That to me, I do not like. You have to run this bike slam to make it look good. Um, they need to come out with a little better spacer to fit that bar a little bit better. Uh, just, my, just my take on that right there. Um, but yeah, other than that, it is a 12M carbon fiber and they will have, later on I'll have a bunch of other bikes coming out, the Evo edition of this bicycle. So to let you guys know on the Evo, the Evo will now be 130 in the front, 120, but the Evo frame is exactly the same as a regular Epic just with different suspension on there. So nothing changes on the frame except for the front suspension on there. Um, but a lot of people I think rode the Evo because all the pros are riding the Evos for the races. Now this bicycle is really capable. I mean, a 120, 120, this is pretty much what the whole field's riding out there. You have the Scott Spark riding 120, 120. A lot of cross country bikes are going with that bigger travel to make it more capable, to go at features faster, to go into corners harder. Um, and you're able to have more confidence going into it with better suspension. So really, really good job there. Much wider down tube as well. Let's open up the SWAT storage box. We have this little lever here. Bada bing, bada boom. This thing pops open like this. On the back here, I believe you can go ahead and fit a little CO2 on there as well. You have a SWAT bag inside here. Pull this thing out. And then you can go ahead and change it out right there. You know, you can put your, your CO2s, your tire levers, everything inside there. Let's go ahead and put this back on here right quick. Let's see if we can get it on like this. I don't want to scratch the bike, you know. Don't worry, if this bike, if I scratch this bike, whoever buys this bike gets the bike with the scratch. <laughs> um, and yeah, okay, so let's go over this whole entire bicycle and talk about the features on it. So you get there, starting off with the handlebar here, we get the whole entire one-piece bar and stem combination by Revol. Really nice sweep to it, and honestly, the bar looks really, really well. I think they did a great job with that cockpit on there. I got a feeling that sooner than later, we're gonna start seeing mountain bikes run a complete internal one-piece bar and stem where the cables are completely hidden on there. I know probably mountain bikers won't like it, but I'm sure it's going to head that way in the future. Going to the handlebar grips on here as well. We have the lock-on grips by Specialized. Nothing crazy about these. Nothing changed here. Um, just your standard lock-ons on here. Interest interesting choice of brakes on here. I think they just did for the co color choice. But these are the level ultimate brakes right here. These are a four-piston brake system on here. So if you did want to lighten this bicycle up, which 23 pounds, 11 ounces for a size large, with your cage and everything on there and a power mirror is not bad. This is not tubeless ready. You can easily line this thing up by doing different tires, different brakes. Uh, obviously it's 14.5, you guys are gonna probably say whatever. You also have a dropper post in there, but that's pretty lightweight for a freaking cross country bike uh, with electronic suspension on there, which is pretty badass. Um, but yes, you have a four piston brake on here with a SRAM level alternate uh, and the chrome looks badass. They only make the chrome color in the four piston. I think that's why they did that. You have your 
uh, SRAM axis shift right here that controls the rear derailleur, your T-type, the transmission system. And then over on this side, we have the exact same grip with the exact same brake. But on this side, like I said, you have the plus sign up here. This is going to control your suspension there. And then this one right here controls your dropper post, which is right here to go up and down. Uh, it is a wireless dropper post in there. Going down to the head tube, we have the cable that goes internally into the headset bearings. And then we have here the new SRAM RockShock SID Ultimate Flight Deck Suspension on here. And the color is pretty badass. You can see the fork there it has this like bluish green hue to it. The other colors are magenta. They look badass. They really did a good job with the colors on here. Um, I like them a lot. The color scheme is really, really nice. If I was spending 14.5 on this, I'd be very happy with the color scheme. Uh, going down to the wheels, I know some people saw, said they saw some pictures of this thing with carbon fiber spokes. These are still the same tried and true Revolve Control SL wheel sets on here. Uh, dumb light for a mountain bike wheel set. The internal rim width on these things are 29 millimeters. They have a tubeless ready setup on there. They are a bladed spoke with a Roval hub, but DT Swiss 180 ceramic bearings inside of them. I believe for the set, they're like 1,280 grams for the wheel set, which is crazy lightweight for mountain bike wheels. You do have on here a fast track control tire. Pretty weird they wouldn't put their S-Works on there, but I'm guessing just for durability. You have a fast track control tire on there by 29 by 2.35. And then going over to the other side here, we have a SRAM six bolt disc brake on here uh, in a 180 configuration, which looks to be the smallest you can put on this front fork. So keep that in mind. You can't run a 160 on there because there's no adapters. And then you have your SRAM level disc brake caliper on there as well. Um, yeah, you can even lighten this thing up by doing different tires on there. Really, really cool. The configuration on here for the through axle is a 15 by 110 boost. And also the rake on this thing is 44 uh, millimeter rake on here as well for the suspension. You have your air compressor or that's where you're going to pump up your suspension for your air right there. And we can see this right here. 44 millimeter offset, 120 travel, 29 wheel, and then you have your suspension setups right there for air PSI, which is pretty cool. Down the frame, like I said, is much wider. We even have this little kind of plastic little guard on the bottom of there, which is pretty nice. It is a um, Threaded BSA bottom bracket with a SRAM dub on there. So very easy configuration for bottom brackets. You don't have to worry about any creaks or cracks on there. We do like that a lot. Going on over to the other side here. We do have our little thing for the uh, Garmin mount. A little bug on my screen. Going down here, we get two carbon fiber cages included with your purchase and also your little SWAT tool and also inside here, your little tool bag on there. For the crank set on here, it's a SRAM XX transmission dub crank set with a power meter on here, a 34 tooth chain ring with a cork power meter. And I think these crank arms are 175. That's weird. I would assume with this bicycle, they put 170s on there being that the trend is so trendy. And even for the stump jumpers, they put 170s on there. Um, but maybe they have the 175s, I don't know. But I got a feeling a lot of people are gonna be swapping these out to like 170 or 165s on here. Uh, the S-Works is made with a 12M carbon fiber. All the other bicycles will be made with a 10M or 11M, I believe. So it will be a different carbon fiber weave on there. Uh, for the rear shock, we have the Sid Lux Ultimate with their flight deck uh, configuration with electronic on there as well. The only way to get this flight deck tuned with this shock, even that. So like I said before, if you were to buy this shock and put the flight deck on there, it wouldn't even have the specialized tune on there, which is proprietary to go ahead and work with this bicycle, which is very, very nice. Uh, you do have the flip chip on here with the low and high, and then you have a carbon fiber yoke, which carbon fiber on here looks, there it is, a gloss carbon fiber, which looks badass. Really, really cool. I like when they do those little parts in carbon fiber, which is always nice. Um, we have a T-type chain going with an MRP chain guy right there, going to the back of the cassette, a 1052 tooth T-type cassette as well. Stupid lightweight with the new transmission system. And then for the rear, their T-type SRAM XX rear derailleur that you have the UDH compatibility with the frame that it goes right onto the frame itself and there is no more hanger. So you don't have to worry about any more bent hangers. And this derailleur is literally bomb proof. There's tons of YouTube videos of people smacking with hammers, dropping them on grounds, hitting them with ice picks, whatever the hell you want to do. Those derailers live up to the hype. We sold a couple of them here in South Florida and there are no issues that I've seen so far with them. It's a very easy, simple fix for each one on there, which is really, really cool. Um, oh, I wonder if those are titanium bolts are there. I would assume they'd be titanium, but looks very easy for the, the shock and the yoke system on there. Um, one question we'll have to figure out, how much service is gonna be for these things? What's gonna happen if suspension goes bad or electronics is bad? I don't know. I don't know anything about these in terms of electronics or suspension, but 
we'll figure that later on down the road. But the cool thing is that all these batteries are swappable. They're interchangeable. So if your battery does die on the trail, you can take it off your driver post and put it on there if you wanted to. Um, rear wheel is exact same as the front. A Revolve Control SL wheel with a Renegade tire, a 29 by 2.35. And then the rear rotor is going to be a 160, it looks like. Yep, a 160 rear rotor. And that's the smallest rotor you can put back there with their 12 by 148 boost compatibility for a mountain bike system on here, um, which is very, very nice. Going to the dropper post, it is the RockShock Reverb Axis wireless dropper post. And they do give you on here a specialized S-Works power saddle, carbon fiber rail, carbon fiber body, and level one padding on there. But this is the specialized S-Works Epic 8 size large, retail is 1,000, no, sorry. Retail is $14,500 for this bicycle. Um, weight was 23 pounds, 11 ounces. And this is the eighth generation of the Epic. And I got a feeling you're gonna see this thing out there dominating a lot of races because it is a lot of technology in the bicycle and uh, very, very cool technology on there. So I'm very happy with this bike. We do have a couple of these things in the stock. Um, I have a medium complete, I have a large complete, I have frames, I have some Evos. So hit us up if you're local but the bike looks fucking, oh, sorry. The bike looks freaking sick. I do like that color a lot. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Stay tuned for the free of buy sound test on that Revolve Control Wheel SL right there.